Hello there. Good evening, everyone. This is Dari on World Streams Radio. Thank you to our listeners from all over the world for joining us tonight. We wish you a happy new year, 2011. To learn more about World Streams Radio, visit our website, worldstreams.org. You can also find us now on Facebook at facebook.com slash worldstreams. Our guest tonight is Paul Krasner. Paul Krasner is an author, journalist, stand-up comedian, and the founder, editor, and a frequent contributor to the free thought magazine The Realist. He was a key figure in the counterculture revolution of the 1960s, a founder of the Youth International Party, the Yippies, in 1967, and a member of Ken Kesey's Merry Pranksters, famous for their prankster activism. This is the third year that Paul has done our first program of the new year. Hi there, Saeed. Hello and welcome, Paul. Happy New Year. It's a pleasure to have you with us again tonight. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dari. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Good evening to you, Paul. It's been one year, almost one year, since you've been with us. And I'd like to congratulate you on the award that, that was just recently given to you on December by the Penn Writing Award. It's such a prestigious award. Tell us about it. Well, actually, it was the, it was the Lifetime Achievement Award, and uh, I, I was I was honored to receive it. Really happy, and I was happier that it wasn't a posthumous award. Um, and uh, I made the point in my in my acceptance speech that uh, you know anybody who gets a lifetime achievement award has uh, not really done it alone. That there are people who have supported and loved and uh, helped in various ways uh, to. Uh, continue doing what I what I did and uh, so I, I said as I always do at award ceremonies I wanted to thank all the people who uh, have uh, been um, mentors and uh, friends and, and I said I would do it in chronological order starting with my parents of course uh, who uh, w- uh, were embarrassed and maybe even ashamed of some of the stuff I wrote but uh, when I was uh, editing The Realist which was considered by others, not by me, the hippest mag- magazine in America, but I was still living with my parents. But anyway, I, before I uh, thanked any of the people, uh, I had made a vow, uh, if I ever got an award, because, uh, you know, you don't do stuff for an award. It's it's just uh, a, a byproduct of what you do because you had to. And so um, I explained to the audience that uh, not many people knew of my spiritual quest and so I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Satan <laughs> and uh, and the uh, uh, everybody there who knew me laughed. But there were people there for other authors uh, who were just getting awards for uh, for the books they had for writing last yeah. year, and um, uh, and and their jaws dropped um, because they because it could have been true, you know, and they were a little bit shocked. <laughs> But but that's the thing about uh, uh, about this time in our history that it, it's getting more and more difficult to separate what's real uh, and and uh, what's a a, a a satirical extension of it. So when I, when I told pe- uh, people uh, that I was getting this award, I said I, uh, it was uh, a struggle in terms of the competition, but I beat out Justin Bieber and. Uh, they said yes, and he's only 14 years old, and he's already writing a memoir. They they took it seriously. Yes. Uh, what is uh, what is the fine line between satire and reality, actually? Well, uh, you know, satire can be an exaggeration of the reality, and good satire sometimes. I think the best example is was just recently um, Andy Barowitz uh, on his uh, internet column. Uh, uh, described, uh, I forget the exact headline, but it involved uh, Pat uh, Robertson do, uh, blaming the snow on gays on the East Coast. Uh, but a much yeah. better, set, well-phrased sentence than that. And there were people, reporters I know, very sharp reporters who thought that was real because uh, 
uh, they rem- they remember Pat Robertson uh, blaming the uh, Katrina on gays in Louisiana. I mean, so so it's possible it it crosses that line. Therefore, making the point, uh, uh, you know, whatever the target is, if people believe something even even further, that that shows that they already think that uh, a, a certain reality is absurd. So there is reality that is for the masses, and there is satire that 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 has a hint of cleverness and a hint of a punchline of some sort. How many people today do you think, compared to, say, the 60s, the 70s, really do understand satire for what it is as as a tool, as a form of public discourse? Is satire? Yeah. As a tool? Well, yeah. you know. There was the uh, the recent uh, uh, rally, the uh, Restore Sanity and uh, Give uh, Fear a Chance, um, uh, sponsored and organized by John Stewart and right. uh, Stephen Colbert, and uh, that was a good. It got more people to turn out than than went to the Glenn Beck rally. Uh, but it was, um, you know, I, I and the con- there were comparisons and there were contrasts between those two rallies. Um, on one hand, uh, the Glenn Beck rally uh, just reeked with uh, religious piety throughout and the, uh, throughout the event, and uh, the uh, John Stewart Stephen Colbert rally. Um, had I, I think God was mentioned once in uh, uh, when Tony Bennett sang America, and and then uh, there was a satirical uh, invocation done by Don Novello, who uh, was in the character of his priest from yes, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday Father, Night Live, uh, Father Sarducci, right? Right, Father Guido Sarducci. Guido right. Sarducci, yeah. And so what he did was to. Uh, talk directly to God and say, uh, uh, which is the best religion? Uh, give me a sign. And he started riffing about each religion, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, um, um, Islam. And the only thing he was told not to talk about by Stephen Colbert was Mormonism. And the reason was because Glenn Beck uh, is a Mormon so uh, I thought it was very ironic since uh, uh, Colbert was doing his best to keep fear alive. Yes, but um, in parallel, uh, the two, here is Stephen Colbert and John Stewart. Uh, they have also some kind, there is some kind of uh, moral value to what they were doing at the same time, as actually Glenn Beck, what he was doing with all his, uh, you know, religious morality agenda, and so forth, there is a certain parallel to draw between the two. Well, except one, you know, one is uh, uh, based on on lies and distortion and mean spiritedness, and the other is done in the spirit of fun and uh, 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 humane uh, qualities. And uh, so, I think uh, what they had in common was that uh, they were both in Washington. But uh, y- y- you know the. Uh, uh, I-, I mean, it's it's. I don't want to say they're nuts, but but they are. Uh, you know, if they only listen to Fox, they have a limited view of the world. And right, uh, and 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 on the other hand, one one is a movement, and one is just a gathering, uh, a gathering of some sort, which is. The movement continues, which which has been a phenomenon in 2010 that has given us these these strange elections in 